Hey guys, today we're going to be going over routing using the standard library in Go. And I'm going to be using the routing enhancements in Go version 1.22, so it's recommended that you upgrade to a recent version as well. For reference, I'm using 1.23.2. I think this is the latest version or one of the most recent versions at the time of this recording. So the first thing I want to go over is the different HTTP methods we can use. So right now you'll see we have a get to the hello endpoint and it's calling the hello handler. And our hello handler is just a single handler function that's printing out hello world. And we can just test that real quick with a curl request. And you can see we're running on localhost 8080 down here on all interfaces. And so we'll just do that and then slash hello because our route is a hello route here. And we'll click enter and we get hello world as expected. And we can also just try a non-existing route and see if that works as well. And you'll see that we get a 404 not bound. So everything's working as expected. We can also try this. So we have a get request specified here. But what if we would do a try post request to the um, hello route? So we'll do that real quick and we'll see we get a method not allowed. So this is because we specified it here. However, if we were to take this out and restart our server, we can curl post, it's going to return hello world. So this has to do with the routing changes. The recent routing changes allow you to specify the method in this string here. And so what were to happen if we wanted to change this get request to a post request? So it's simply we just change the string here and then it's automatically a post request. It's gonna validate that it is a post and it won't allow any other method. If you wanna do more granular checks, you can always just remove the post and then do an if check here. You can say if r dot method is not equal to HTTP.method post. If you want to check for post request, then you can do a method not allowed. This is essentially doing the same exact thing that we had when we had the post hello here. So we can just delete these few lines and we'll just run this one more time just to verify that everything's working. We'll do a post request to localhost 8080 slash hello and we'll see hello world. And we'll make sure that get is not allowed. And we see you get method not allowed. So this is working exactly as intended. Normally you'd want to access the body of a post request and use that to update something in your database or perform another action. But in our cases, we're just demonstrating. So we're just printing hello world. The next uh, major topic in Go's routing that I want to discuss, and I think a lot of people get tripped up on this early on, is when you add a slash to the end of a route, so when you have a trailing slash, it's going to behave differently than you might expect. So we're going to change this back to a get request and then add a trailing slash to the end. And you'll see that when we restart our server and do a curl with a get request to localhost 8080 slash hello, we're gonna get a moved permanently. So this is a redirection that's occurring. Um, in our browser, we would actually get redirected to the hello page. So we can just swap over to that real quick and try it out. So I'll just copy this link real quick and then go to the browser, paste. If we type hello, we'll see we're now in this trailing slash here. So it automatically redirected us, which is nice. And it's doing a permanent redirection. So it's just a way to indicate to the browser that is permanently at a new location, at a new route. That's convenient and it's nice that it's baked into the standard library, but that's not the main purpose of talking about these trailing slashes. The interesting thing is that whenever you have a trailing slash, any other route after is gonna match. This is because it's a wildcard route. And so we can actually have foo slash bar can be deeply nested too, and it's still gonna match low world. So we can even have numbers too, because numbers are still technically strings in any type of get request. So what if you want a trailing slash route, but you don't want it to match on all other routes like a wildcard route? Well, you can simply do this by adding a special syntax, which is a dollar sign surrounded by two brackets. So this is gonna match the hello route with the trailing slash. You won't have to type this into the request at all. It's just the indicator that this isn't a wildcard route. So we'll restart our server, do another curl, to hello, and we'll try foo.123 again, and we'll see that it's a 404 now. So we can try just foo, 404, and if we go back to hello with a slash, we get a hello world. If we remove the slash, we're getting our redirection. So it's easy to get caught up with this early on if you're not sure. You may have a root level route like this, and this is what you need to specify just to get that landing page or homepage route. If you have this, it's gonna act like a 404, like catch-all handler, which is actually great if you wanna display a custom 404 page, you can just do this. 
Also with Go, routes have a precedence. And so the most specific route will always take precedence. So if we have a route to get slash hello slash, so this is a wildcard route, and we have another wildcard route here, and we'll just do a foo handler for this. That'll print out foo, and then we'll call it here. And so we're expecting that anything that's hello, because this is more specific, it should print hello world. So we'll restart our server. We'll do a curl request to hello, get them move permanently. But if we rerun it at the with the trailing slash, we'll get a hello world. So that's as expected. Now, if we do a foo bar as well, we can see it's still acting like it was when it was the wildcard route that we demonstrated earlier. So if we do hello slash foo, you'll see it's still acting as the wildcard route. But if we do slash, we'll see we get foo and anything else. So we could just say foo slash bar, you get foo slash hello. It's gonna still match the foo handler because it's not matching this anymore. When it was matching this, this was always taking precedence over that. And that's because this is the more specific route. So we could add one more layer just to further demonstrate. So we can have hello slash foo, and we have a foo handler here. We'll just take this one out and we'll start our server again. And then we'll do hello slash foo. And we'll see we're matching foo again. And anything else though, bar would be hello world. So it's only foo, but you can do foo bar bads and it's still gonna match foo because this is the slash hello slash foo. And so it's matching this. And this is more specific than that. One last thing I wanna go over is when we have nested routes. So we'll just delete these real quick and take these handlers out. And so say we have an API and we have versioning that we wanna do. So we have a version one and a version two. So we're gonna actually define different muxes for this. So we're gonna have a API v1 that we're gonna say is equal to a new serve mux and then an API v2, which we're also gonna find to a new serve mux. And then in each one, we're gonna have a different different handler. So we'll have a API v1.handle func, and we'll do that to the slash, say we have a users, and then we're gonna do a users handler. And then we can also do that for API v2. We'll have a users handler as well, but we'll call it v2, say something in the API spec changed. And so now we can go and add these uh, handlers and we'll see here that we have of users and v2 users. And again, this is called on each of these different serve muxes. So now we can take our top level router here that we're passing to the listen and serve and add these two other API v1 and API v2 muxes to them. So we'll do a router.handle and do a slash API slash v1 and then we'll call a function that strips the prefix of this path. And so what this is doing, you can see it returns a handler that serves HTTP requests by removing the given prefix from the requests URL path. So basically what that does is whenever you make a request, you're going to you're going to do a get request to localhosts on 8080 slash API slash v1 slash users. So what strip prefix is doing is it's going to take out this slash API v1 here. You see this matches. It's just going to delete that. So it's going to only match this slash users route. If we take out this, you'll see here that this is matching this now. This is necessary because if it were to still be API slash v1 slash users, it wouldn't be able to match anything here. The way that muxes work, it doesn't understand that this is basically a nested route. So you have to do it this way. And this is going to match because there's a users here and there's a get users here. And then we can also do the same thing. So we'll do a router handle get API slash v2, and then we'll pass in this mux here. And we can just run this real quick and verify that it works. So we'll get local host 8080 API v1 slash, and I think our route is called users. You see, we get users. I didn't add a trailing new line. And then we'll do the same thing with v2 users. And we see get v2 users. And that's why Go is great for defining APIs because you can do this all with just the standard library, specifically the net slash HTTP package. And it's everything you need in a router and it's strongly and statically typed. So you're catching most of your errors at compile time rather than runtime. So I hope this went over most of the routing questions that you have when you're initially starting with Go. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. 
and hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.